During the 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and even into the 1990s, I did a lot of sales presentation and product launches. Now, how did I get into that? Well, of course, all those years I was booked as an entertainer to come to these uh, conferences to be the light-hearted entertainer at the end of the evening. But because I turned up early, I used to see their presentations of the products. Very boring charts, bar charts, graphs, pie charts, figures and numbers flashing up on the screen, sometimes upside down. The sound wouldn't be very good. Every time there was another speaker, they had to adjust the sound again. So I gently started making suggestions. If you put the microphone there or use the lighting in this way, you'll be better off. And they appreciated that because it worked. And then a little later on, they said, uh, would you perhaps introduce people? Because they're not professional speakers. They might be expert at their own field, whatever they're, the engineer, the art designer, uh, the sales manager, but they're not necessarily good uh, public speakers. So they said, would you introduce them? Which I did, and I did it in a light-hearted way, made a few jokes, did some tricks, uh, and then they said at the end of the conference, you know, there was one problem when you came on, it seemed to be high up and you got the audience going, and then it dropped when the speaker came on and then you had to pick it up again. Why don't you do the whole presentation? And I said, wait a minute, how can I possibly talk about the technical side of your product? Just at that time, it so happened that I got friendly with a man called James Garrett, who was a pioneer in autocue. And I introduced autocue to many of these companies. And the autocue is a television set built inside a lectern, facing upwards, throwing up the words in mirror image. It's then reflected on a piece of glass the right way around so that the person speaking can read the words, but the audience only sees a piece of glass. Uh, a lot of people used to think it's in case he spat that they had a piece of glass, but actually it's the autocue for him to read the words. Now, of course, it's commonplace. Everybody knows about it. But in those days, all these managers and people who had to speak were frozen to the desk very tight and very up, 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 uptight and, and, and worrying that they would lose the place and just reading the lines from the class. So I started putting uh, these reflective glass in flower pots and behind products and if they had to turn around to the screen there'd be one behind them so they could continue reading it whether they looked left or right, whether they looked behind them there would always be one of the autocue screens for them to read on, so they started getting more relaxed. And when they asked me to do the whole presentation, of course that's what I did. I had the autocue sheets everywhere, so I was able to give these long explanations of technical things that I knew very little about when I started. And people who weren't aware of what was happening often asked me, how do you remember all those things? Well, of course, they knew that I gave uh, memory training courses and I, I do have a good memory and have good systems to remember things, but in this case they were all new technical things I had to learn for each product. And I was involved in lots of different products, from um, car launches to toothpaste to biscuits to drinks to holiday islands. Now, how do you go about presenting us in such a way that you get a good ambience and a good atmosphere. Because when you go to a hotel room, usually it's a ballroom or a large presentation room, it's very cold, there's no atmosphere. So I learned to turn these ballrooms into a miniature theatre. What I do is I have my own stage built because quite often I need uh, something under the stage like a trap door to hand things up. I need side curtains, uh, which are usually just rods with curtains hanging from me. I need special lighting. I put flower puts on either side of the steps to make it look nice. 
and usually had a, a pattern of some kind on the stage and then they put chairs out and if the hotel hasn't got enough chairs we rent them in and within two or three hours we've transformed a normal hotel ballroom or a meeting room into miniature theatre and this is what it looks like. In this particular instance I was launching a new washing machine for a company called English Electric. Uh, English Electric has their own uh, logo which is always Union Jacks with two E's English Electric. I put the name of course uh, always above the stage and a row of flags and there was a reason for that which I explained. There you can see the stage that I've just mentioned uh, with a um, chessboard pattern on the floor and the flower arrangement and the side curtains. When I first appear, I always start with lightheartedly saying a few jokes and doing some tricks, usually related to the product, but they don't know it yet. They don't realize that I'm not part of the company because I refer to the products as ours and we are doing this now because it has a stronger impact rather than outsider saying, oh, you are going to this or they are going to that. So I would say we are doing this. And of course I do learn quite a lot about the product, but any technical stuff I can read from the autocues. So in order to have a light-hearted way to introduce the English electric washing machine, I said let's go back a few years when this was the English electric washing machine. And I show a tub, an old-fashioned tub with EE on the, on the tub and a lady dressed as a washerwoman with an apron and a scarf on her head uh, rubbing away on the washboard. I said, but that was too slow for English Electric, so then they plugged it in and I had a cord going from this wash tub on stage and apparently plugged into Electric and she's going faster and faster and she's going really fast and looking exhausted and the whole thing blows up and of course it's supposed to be a gag and it worked that way. I also showed a special washing powder, which in this case I called flop. It's an old magic trick, but I turned it into something appropriate for this particular presentation. The important part is that I put in some soiled, dirty silk handkerchiefs, lots of them, and then you wave your hand and magically they come out absolutely clean. You show those immaculate and put them away. But the surprising thing is that you tear open the packet and there's nothing inside it. They expect the dirty handkerchiefs to still be in there. Of course they've gone. It, it's an established magic routine, but it's always very good to have something appropriate for the product that you're introducing. And then we come to the product that they've come to see. Now remember these are sales forces. These are the people who are in the high street in the electrical showrooms selling the products, cookers, washing machines, fridges and so on. So when a housewife or a man goes in to buy a product, they don't really know what they want. They may have been influenced by some advertising, but all washing machines wash and all cookers cook and so on. So it's up to the sales force to be able to sell one of the products. Now which one are they going to sell? At the time that we were doing the English Electric washing machine, Hoover also had a washing machine to sell and they were offering the sales force £10, which was a lot of money in those days, £10 as a bonus for each machine that they sold. And yet they sold more English Electric washing machines. Why is that? It's because they've been to one of my demonstrations and they've learned much more about that product than the other one. And you can't help yourself, although you may want to sell the Hoover machine because you know you're going to get £10, but they knew more about the one that I'd shown them because I present the things in a very visual way. It's rather like going to the cinema 
and coming home and then having to tell people what you saw. Nobody asked you to remember it, it just automatically happened. So because I do a lot of visual things, they remember all the sales points. When I introduced the washing machine, uh, it was brought on by two girls, quite provocatively dressed, just pushing the washing machine with two fingers to bring it on the stage. That's the first sales point that the mobility of the machine, in those days it was unusual to have casters on the machine. Usually it would be fit in the kitchen and couldn't be moved. So my job is to let the audience know the word mobility. And there were 15 different sales points I had to put across. But by doing it visually like that, you don't actually have to say the word mobility. It comes back to them automatically. Now, as far as the audience is concerned, they think I'm introducing the genuine new washing machine. But actually, the one I bring on, that is, of course, a fake one, in order to demonstrate some of the sales points, which, of course, as you can imagine, are that it washes quickly and efficiently and, and smoothly. So how do I put that across? Well, I take a shirt, uh, just a crumpled shirt, and I splash some ink on it, some black marks, quite large ones, onto the shirt. And as I splash, accidentally, some of the ink got onto my hand and to my cup which I looked a bit irritated about, obviously, but I have to continue the presentation. So I said, now in order to identify the shirt, we have a luggage label which I'd like you to sign, somebody signs it, we tie it to one of the buttonholes, so it can be identified later, and it's stuffed into the washing machine. And there are a number of buttons on the outside, and I press a button and it goes whoosh, and you can see the shirt spinning around inside the washing machine and a second later I open it up, I take it out and it's a pure white shirt, dripping wet of course, but the stains have completely gone. And the audience instinctively want to applaud because it's quite dramatic. I said, but it does more than that. And we we'll put it in again, still with the tag and the signature on it and out comes this time, it's perfectly dry. So it's done the two jobs. And there was another button which said STUFF, Scientifically Treated Ultra Fine Fabrics. Oh, I see, it's for silks and so on. So we put the shirt in again, press the button, second date, I take it out, and I have trouble pulling it out because it's all blown up, it's absolutely stuffed out like that and I'm pulling and heaving and I get it out and it's a big blown up shirt and I said, now I know what STUFF, it's a stuffed shirt, yes, it's an old stuffed shirt. That was a gag of course. I then deflated and put it back because there's a little roller at the side and I said, unfortunately we haven't automated this yet and I push it through the roller and it comes out perfectly clean, ironed, and inside a cellophane bag. It's a gag, of course, but um, the audience can appreciate what I'm showing them, and everything happens very quickly. Now, having done that, I'm still irritated with this stain on my hand and my cup. So I said, hmm, I wonder. And I put my hand inside the washing machine. I press the button, once again, whoo, I take it out and it's clean. There's no stain on my cup. My hand is clean. I said, do you know, I didn't know it could do that. That's fantastic. Would anyone else like to, to try that? And the voice from the back of the hall said, yeah, Gob, I'll have a go. Wow, that's an unusual voice in this sort of sales presentation. So up comes a real tramp. He's unshaven. His hair is sticking up all over the place. He's wearing a dirty old drain coat. His trousers are creased. His tie is creased. As I said, he's unshaven. Looks a bit um, uncouth. And um, he said, yeah, I'll have a go because the wash and brush up at the station closed now 
I said, you, you, well, I can see your coat doesn't need a bit of clean. Would you give it to me? And I said, well, holding it at arm's length because it's a bit smelly. He said, no, no, I don't mean my coat. I mean me. I said, what do you mean you? He said, well, as I said, the uh, wash and brush up at the, uh, at the station was closed. I said, well, I don't know. By that time, I put the coat in. And I said, yeah, it did need a bit of a wash. And um, so I said, are you sure you want to do this? And he said, yes. So I thought he was going to put his hand in, but he kneels down and puts his head in. And I tap him on the shoulder, he looks up again. I said, are you sure you want to do this? I said, uh, yeah, yeah, I can hold my breath. And I said, I've, I've been doing that ever since you came up, never mind, <laughs> go ahead. Again, I have my doubts. I tap him on the shoulder again. I said, I think you ought to wear this. And I give him a scuba mask, with one of those round masks with a snorkel on it. He said, no, no, I don't need that. I'll hold my breath. So I said, oh, what you insist. So he puts his head in. I press the button. And again, there's a whirring sound. And he's flaying his arms. And we don't know what's happening. I stop the machine. He comes out. And as he comes up, he spews some water from his mouth and he's suddenly, the audience sees, he's clean shaven, his hair is beautifully combed, he's got a smart tie on now, his trousers are creased, his shoes are clean, and suddenly he's got an Oxford English accent and said, that's better, my man. I said, wow, I said, what a transformation. I said, uh, he said, well, thanks a lot. And he's just about to go off. I said, don't forget your coat. And I reach in, his coat is now pure white and beautiful trench coat, which he puts over his shoulder. And he starts doing this. And I said, what are you looking for, your gloves? He said, no, 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 no. My lucky black cat. I said, what do you mean? I said, I always carry my lucky black cat, but it must have got stuck. Never mind, I'll get it later, and he walks off. At that moment, of course, I break out of character and I tell the ladies and gentlemen, that was my friend, an actor, and I mention his name, and he gets a round of applause. And I said, it's a funny thing to have a lucky black cat. Let me have a look. And I look in the washing machine, and sure enough, there's a real live black cat which I take out and hold and stroke. But it's rather dingy looking. It's got powder marks on him. I said, well, perhaps he should have been cleaned up as well. I put him back in the machine, press a button. You can see the cat flaming around in the glass window. And uh, out he comes. He's now black and white. I said, it's been partly washed. Let's put him in again. And I put him in again. And as he's flying around, you can see the cat in the window, I start doing a sort of pseudo-technical talk. It's all gibberish, but the audience is listening. And suddenly I remember the cat. I said, oh my goodness, I've left the cat in too long. And I take it out, and it's a rusty red cat, a ginger cat. And I make a sort of an in-joke. I said, just... Uh, remember, never leave your cat in the washing machine too long. It might fur out, which they, of course, can appreciate as professionals. And then I put it in again, and this time it comes out pure white. A beautiful white floppy cat. The reason I did that, I tell the audience that English Electric have decided that every housewife or man who will buy the washing machine will get a bonus prize of a lovely white cat, which is actually a pyjama case with a zip where you can put your night or your pyjamas. And they would give that away with each machine. So the advertising was, is that the cat or the washing machine? Because it was quiet. It purred like a cat. Well, let me explain how we achieved some of these um, illusions. Normally, of course, I wouldn't give away magical tricks, but these are not exactly magical tricks. These are things I use in the sales presentation. When I picked up the shirt, I genuinely do splash it with the ink, but um, I have a, a special loose piece of stain that I attach to my cup secretly and also to my hand. 
So it's just to pretend that when I've splashed the ink onto the shirt that some of it's come up here and I look quite irritated by it. When I put the stained shirt into the washing machine, it actually does go inside, but what the audience doesn't know is that it's absolutely hollow and somebody's sitting under the stage taking the dirty shirt and substituting for a similar shirt which has been dipped into a, a bucket of water so it's wet. So when I take it out, I take out the wet shirt. Now, how do we get the tab that's been signed from one to the other? Well, it's a special little tag that can be detached from the string which is already on the other shirt and reattached. So it's always the same signed tag that goes from one shirt to the other. After I've shown the wet but clean shirt, I put that in again and this time it comes up as a stuffed shirt and that of course was previously blown up with balloons inside the shirt and I pretend to have to struggle to get it out. I mean it really is puffed up like that. Again the tag is attached to that one and I make the joke that STUFF was a stuffed shirt not scientifically treated out of fine fabrics as I said in the first place. Well of course the stuffed shirt was just a light out of gag but then I had an afterthought and said I wonder and put my hand into the machine and of course at that moment the person hiding under the stage just pulled off that little flap that I put on my cup and on my hand which was loose, put a bit of water over my hand so it would be wet and I pressed the button, made the whirring sound again and brought my hand out and I said, oh that's fantastic, it's all clean, still wet, I dried my hand and that's when I said, would somebody like to try it? Well obviously we had set this up, the actor who played the tramp had uh, makeup uh, on his face to make him look unshaven, he was wearing an untidy wig, his tie was all creased up, held together with some pins he had dust on his shoes, he had um, a clip on each trouser which made it look creased um, and as he bent down he unclipped the uh, clips and, and threw them into the washing machine which of course the audience didn't see. The man inside the washing machine pulled the wig off where he had his well combed hair underneath. He also had a, a towel which he wiped the black a shadow which was just part of his face which made him look clean and the last thing he did before he came up is he gave him a glass of water to sip. He had a straw and a glass of water and he sipped up a mouthful of water so as he came out he was able to spew out this water and suddenly put on this um, accent, posh accent and said oh that's better my man and he looked perfectly clean from the front. It was quite a transformation from the tramp that came up to this well-washed and uh, good-looking guy that was came out of the machine. It's a, a gang that worked really well. Well, on this picture, you can see my assistant who was under the stage. He had two baskets to keep the cats in and he had everything that he needed to assist uh, to clean the tramp up and so on. So it's a very simple explanation, but it worked really well.